I'm doing things now that are in the scene size of, in the primary assessment, because it applies to all levels. When I last took the paramedic national registry exam, I got to tell you, I think about 30 or 40 percent of the questions were just basic BLS questions. So regardless of where you are, these things tonight will work for you. Which of the following patients will be treated first in a multiple casualty incident? Now, the first thing I want to say is, is that this isn't asking whether someone would be tagged red, yellow, green, or black. Although that is a consideration in this question. So let's go through and look at that first. Unresponsive patient able to maintain their own airway would be tagged as red. An alert patient with a broken femur, depending on if they're in shock or not, would either be, if they're in shock, it would be red. If they're not, they would be yellow. They're probably not gonna get up and walk around. A pulseless child. Now I gotta tell you, I put that in there on purpose because pulseless is pulseless. And in a multiple casualty incident, the pulseless child would be tagged black, would be dead. And a disoriented person walking around the scene would also be tagged red. But this question wants to know which would be treated first. So we have two reds, a black, and maybe a yellow in here, right? And that's the tagging. But what would we treat first? And we would take I take the unre choice A, the unresponsive patient, able to maintain their own airway. Because remember, regardless of which triage scheme you use, um, you know, start triage or, you know, any type of triage you do, the general things that make somebody red are altered mental status, signs of shock, you know, in that, and then often a rapid respiratory rate really is indicative of a patient who is very, very sick. So in this case, we've really kind of determined that that choice A and D have that altered mental status, but the unresponsive patient would need more care. We're not asking which one would be tagged the most serious, it's which would be treated first. And the correct answer here is choice A, that unresponsive patient able to maintain their own airway. And why does it say able to maintain their own airway? Because if you have an unresponsive patient and they can't maintain their own airway, they get tagged black. Remember, a multiple casualty incident is a really difficult situation. Well, in this case, choice A is the correct answer. <clears throat> we love the concept of mechanism of injury, but mechanism of injury can sometimes be a little deceiving. How's that? So I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you my Google Chrome window here. I'm not sure if you can see this. Let me. All right, so the red criteria that you see on your screen, right? High risk for serious injury. Anything in the red criteria should be transported to the highest level trauma center available within your region. You don't have a level one. You can't send someone to a level one. But look what we have. There's two main criteria. One is mental status and vital signs. And there you'll see a respiratory rate of greater than 29 breaths a minute. And that is the correct answer. The respiratory rate of 32 in a trauma patient is a very ominous sign. <clears throat> Unable to follow commands, respiratory distress, low pulse ox, there's some blood pressure criteria. And look at the injury patterns penetrating injuries to the head, neck, torso, and proximal extremities. We'll go down to the, to the amputation part there. Amputation proximal to the wrist or ankle. So the red criteria, and these are the most recent guidelines from the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma. These people get the fast pass to a trauma center, to the level one trauma center. But let's look now at the yellow criteria. 
Now, these are the criteria that are currently used in EMS. Now, look at mechanism of injury, partial or complete ejection, significant intrusion. Oh, look, death in the passenger compartment. Okay, that's 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 good. Okay, that's that was part of it. But patients meeting any one of the yellow criteria who don't meet red criteria should be preferentially transported to a trauma center available, but need not be the highest level trauma center. So why did I choose this question? Why did I pick this? Now let's go back to the question. According to the ACS, Committee on Trauma, Trias, Trauma Triage Guidelines, and these take over from the CDC's Trauma Triage Guidelines, which one would indicate transport to a level one trauma center? Amputation of two fingers is not proximal to the wrist or ankle. Fall of 10 feet, mechanism of injury, that's yellow, not level one trauma center. Death of passenger in the same passenger compartment, still mechanism of injury, but respiratory rate of 32. You know, we don't pay attention to respiratory rate enough. You know, you're out there in the truck, you're doing your clinicals, you know, oh, the respiratory is hard to get you right down to 12 or 14 or 16. Respiratory rate can tell us things about patients' metabolic conditions and where they are in trauma. A respiratory rate of 32 is a very sick patient. And that is the only one in this criteria, the only one that fits the red criteria. So in this, the correct answer is choice D, a respiratory rate of 32. That's the only one by trauma triage criteria that would send us to a level one trauma center. Now, I know that you've been taught different things in your class. You've been taught mechanism injury is, is important. And yeah, it's a piece of the puzzle. But you know what? In a car crash, there are so many occupant protection systems there. And I've seen people fall from fifth floor, you know, balconies and, you know, hit a bunch of bushes on the way down and land and get up and walk away. But I've also known people in relatively low speed crashes that have had their seatbelt on wrong and have had horrible uh, intra-abdominal bleeding. The nature of mechanism of injury is not as significant as we think it is. It's not directly correlated with injury. So the American College of Surgeons says, okay, mechanism of injury is something we pay attention to. But the things that we see in the patient, those actual criteria, that's what counts.